The entire plateau of Quito is a single volcanic hearth. The subterranean fire breaks forth, now from one of these openings, now from another. That is how Alexander von Humboldt recalled his expedition through the Andes in his book, Views of Nature. In 1802, the naturalist and explorer traveled to Ecuador to study the highest active volcanoes on the planet, and we are following in his footsteps. People here at that time, they were more afraid of the volcanoes. Probably they think this guy is crazy about trying to go to an active volcano. Humboldt was fascinated about that. That's why he decided to climb. It's a good thing that he decided to do that in this country because then we have the description that, that he made uh, we can count on his experience now. Humboldt hauled dozens of measuring instruments with him up to the crater of Pichincha. He wanted to find empirical evidence that volcanoes were connected underground and that eruptions could create mountain ranges, now basic knowledge for volcanologists like Patricio Ramon. Scientists have determined that the Pichincha volcanic complex is more than a million years old. Its youngest crater was torn out of the mountain range by a gigantic eruption 1,000 years ago. As the researcher's thermal imaging camera shows, Pichincha is very much alive today. I count to something like uh, 10 funerals with a thermal camera, telling us it's still an active volcano. And uh, that activity comes from the heat that is below there. And all the rain that is coming inside the volcano is being heated by the interior of the volcano. And then you can have uh, explosions after that because the pressure is increasing in, inside the crater, in, inside the dome, and then you can have explosions as we have had uh, before. Seventy-three volcanoes, more than a dozen of them still active, all crowded together in a stretch of less than 200 kilometers. Humboldt called this unique mountain chain the Avenue of the Volcanoes. Nowhere else in the world are there so many volcanoes in such a small space. Millions of people in Ecuador live under the constant threat of an eruption. It's a threat monitored by scientists at the Geophysical Institute in Quito. For all the technical advances since Humboldt's day, precise forecasts remain elusive. But the team is able to closely observe activities inside the volcano. From temperature fluctuations to expanding magma chambers and increased gas emissions, any changes could be an indication of an imminent eruption. Here's the status report from the refuge. The volcano is completely submerged in the clouds. Not possible to observe any emissions of gas. Over. Oscar Rubio is the one-man patrol team on Cotopaxi, one of the most active volcanoes in the Ecuadorian Andes. The volcano is under permanent surveillance. Uncle Oso, as he's known up here at the mountain refuge, is not easily shaken. Minor tremors inside the crater are par for the course, and often felt in his lodge. An eruption would give us no more than five minutes to respond up here on Cotopaxi. If the volcano gives us enough time, we follow a strict evacuation plan. But if not, I'll just take my place in the front row to watch this magnificent natural spectacle. And then goodbye. I'm not afraid. We hike across the barren landscape at the foot of Cotopaxi. We are walking over what were once deep gorges, filled in by the countless tons of mud and debris that have swept through here over the course of millennia.
one, two, three, four, five, six different layers of lajars. And maybe the last one, the one close to the top, is the one that was produced during the 1877 eruption, the last big eruption in Cotopaxi volcano. A lajar, a mud flow, is produced when the, the volcano is having an eruption and the glacier melts at almost 6,000 meters. And then you can uh, imagine the potential energy when the, the water starts to flow down. And finally, after uh, descending three, four, five, or even more kilometers from the top of the volcano, we have these deposits that are left from uh, the lajars. The powerful volcanic mud flows can reach speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour, destroying everything in their path. The last major eruption of Cotopaxi devastated the town of Latacunga. Its modern day residents have no more than five minutes to evacuate if the volcano begins to rumble, as it did most recently in 2015. We went outside and saw that the volcano had already started spewing ash. We knew we had to pack our things and get out of town. But we found shelter under the roof of our house and waited there. When the cloud of ash descended and the children became sick, that's when we fled. Our journey through the avenue of the volcanoes ends at the Chilintosa, a colossal rock hurled a distance of 13 kilometers from Cotopaxi. The awesome destructive force of volcanoes was to stay on Humboldt's mind long after he returned from his Andes expedition. Years later, he explained to the world how molten rock is forced up to the surface from the Earth's interior to form the outer face of our planet. A truly groundbreaking scientific insight.